Hi, I'm Steve Robinson, NASA astronaut. Welcome to the Space Crowd. So Steve, you and I grew up with the Apollo generation and I remember those grainy black and white images of Neil Armstrong stepping his, you know, the first steps in the moon. It was exciting, it was ambitious, we thought we could overcome any obstacle as a result. Now, all this time later, uh, the space shuttle is going away, people think that we're coming to the end of an era, but we're at the beginning of another era. What's really changed in your mind and what's there to look forward to when you think about the space program? One of the big thing I think has changed is um, society's confidence in technology. We have much more experience it, with it now. Um, it's not that the you know cutting edge technology that changed society was un unheard of or not around in the 60s, but we certainly didn't have as much experience, and most of it was applied at least in visible ways in the military. And now in the civilian world, of course, we're surrounded by very fast moving new technology families uh, coming along at a fast rate. So we have a lot more confidence to the point of maybe overconfidence. Now we think that technology is going to solve all of our problems. So it's not as a, it's not a cliffhanger when we do something that is, that the engineers know, is very technically challenging. You're an astronaut, so you've experienced space firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure it's made a deep impression on you that you share with people. But in this generation, uh, kids experience things secondhand and they're okay with that. Um, what do you think about that and its application to, uh, to space travel? Does that mean that future missions will be unmanned because that's kind of the way we experience the world now? Well, I do wonder about that. I personally feel that the experiences that I've been privileged to have in space, there's no way you can come even close with a virtual environment. Uh, in fact, we train in virtual environments. We do the very best we can right here in NASA to try to train to be in space. And you think, okay, I know what it's like, I'm ready to go. And then you go up in space and you think, no, I had no idea. <laughs> Is know? it that dramatically different? <laughs> it's dramatically different in terms of the experience, in terms of what you, you know, your sensory experience, and what you see and feel, um, how your body changes. Your body changes significantly while you're up there, right away. You can feel, feel these things happening. However, I do wonder, for maybe a couple of generations from now, when, we, when maybe by then we'll be serious about Mars or some some place like that, um, whether a couple of generations from now people might be satisfied with a very high fidelity virtual environment. Imagine what a virtual environment could be like a couple of generations from now. It could be very high fidelity, very convincing, and so. Could we go to Mars on, with a one-way trip with a set of technology that would beam us back this virtual environment that would be um, maybe pretty satisfying to people? Or, or do people want the experience as much as we did, in, you know, I hate to say, in our generation? But, I, you know, I, I think that's an open question right now. And uh, it'd be interesting to see where the desires of society really, really evolve. Well, we'll get a chance to experience that, right? Because in, in large part, the privatization of space travel, there's a whole tourist industry that's potentially being built around space travel, will give average people mm -hmm. uh, a chance to experience uh, low Earth orbit uh, or even more than that. Well, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that. I think I think uh, the first things that'll be, the first experiences that won't be available are not low Earth orbit. They won't be orbital at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's always okay. something. Uh oh, we ran out of time already. Sorry about that. Sorry. Yeah, we had to restart something. Can oh, two, okay. minutes, two minutes okay? Two minutes is fine. Okay, good. Right. Thank you. Thank you. you. Take the phone off the hook. <laughs> well, it stopped. It's okay. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, I think the more people that experience space flight, um, I'm terribly biased, of course, but I think the better society will be. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Good time. Yeah. Every movie that I've seen has music with astronauts, whether it's been Top Gun or so forth, there's the wake-up calls. Mm -hmm. What role has music had for you, and do you have a favorite piece that when you fly or think about flying that kind of is in your head? Well, music's real important to me. I grew up playing music, and I play music all the time. Um, I play lots of instruments, and I play in different bands, and I listen to music constantly, and so music is a big part of my life, and no matter what I do. And for flying in space, bringing for me, bringing my own music was like bringing home with me, you know, and if I can surround myself with my own music, I'm at home. Any songs that really stick with you? The ones that say, when I'm driving down the road or I'm flying, these are what my tunes. 
I have so many of them in my head, I think it would take me about 10 minutes to sort them out. There's not just one or two. It certainly uh, kind of depends. I, I can sure remember some, some great nights on the space shuttle going to, going to sleep, which is quite an event in itself, or sort of a non-event. You climb into a sleeping bag, and you're supposed to feel like you're laying down, but there is no down. So you don't feel like you're laying at all. You feel exactly like you did before you went to bed. And uh, it's hard to get your brain to you know, kind of slow down and stop thinking. And music does it for me. So I put on my headphones and I let, lay there floating and I think about, I can't believe it, I'm in orbit right now. And I'm listening to my favorite you know, cello music or I love steel guitar music. Um, um, all kinds, you know, blues or rock and roll or whatever, but um, it, it all has a special meaning because it, it just uh, it seems to fit the environment perfectly. Do you, play, do you play guitar? Mm -hmm. that, did you ever bring your guitar in space with you? Mm -hmm. If you look on the web, you'll see a picture. Um, the International Space Station has a thing called the cupola, which is this really cool window thing, and I was on the crew that put it there, and uh, there's a picture of me playing guitar in the cupola. Yeah. We'll have to get that That's one. Last bad. question. Yep. Generational question. Do you see the space, center, uh, space Station being a center for social media and the use of social media that seems to really be growing, both NASA having tweet-ups but also with astronauts taking time to post or communicate with their families or fathers, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook? What's your reaction to the whole feeling about social media and the program? You know what? When you're in, when you're in space for six months, you're quite isolated from everything and everybody you know and love and wish you could see more often. So anything that can bring you closer is going to be is going to be good for the people in space, and the and the reverse is true too. Anything that can bring the ex space experience down to people on the ground, especially kids. I mean, what kids want to know is what's it like for me. You know, what would it be? Could I ride my bike in space? What would brushing my teeth be like in space? And so anything that brings this experience closer and more like, becomes more like my own home experience, uh, I think is better. Have you actually used social media, to whether it's been Skype or Twitter or Facebook to communicate it while you've been on? No, I've been too busy. And your colleagues? Yeah, some, some of the, oh, for sure, some of my colleagues. Um, I have only been on space shuttle missions, and they're a sprint. You know, it's, it's like uh, your sprinters in the Olympics, you're just running the whole time. So there's not much time to do things like that. Well, except for playing guitar in the cupola. <laughs> <laughs> but that was on the International Space Station. <laughs>